Welcome to Think Your Health. And in this channel, we try to explain and to break down health-related information, health-related issues in a clear and easy to understand manner. And in this video, we try to explain how COVID-19, the virus causing this disease, coronavirus, kills us. How does it damage the body? How does it damage different organs? Primarily, the lungs are involved, but other organs can be involved as well, such as the brain, the heart, I already talked about the lungs, the gut, the intestines, and vessels as well. And there are three questions, or maybe four questions, which uh, we don't have the answer to, uh, especially with this disease, when we only started learning about this virus sometime end of December, beginning of January. Now this is the end of April, and it's only about four months old, and we still have a lot of questions which we do not understand. I think one of the questions we do not understand is how do mild cases become very severe cases and why some people are asymptomatic, some people have mild symptoms, and some people have very severe symptoms with life-threatening emergencies with blood clots. And these blood clots, um, they shoot to various parts of the body, like the brain causing strokes or the heart or the lungs. So you can get a clot in your lungs or you can get a clot in your heart and this can cause arrhythmias and you can even have a heart attack. And another thing which we don't understand is something called the cytokine storm. And this has been described by various people, not only at uh, at ground level at the hospital, but also by people who are studying this, especially on a molecular level and pathophysiological level, is there, why is there such an overwhelming immune response to this virus. And another thing which is probably harder to understand is why people have low oxygen levels, but they do not seem to be gasping for air. And there seems to be a discrepancy between these low levels of oxygen and really the requirements or how people are presenting. So let's start off in terms of what happens during the infection. So the virus enters the body and the virus enters your body through the ports of entry, which could be your nose, your mouth, and your eyes. And the virus um, infects this body or enters the body through uh, these ports of entry, but on cellular level, enters your body through ACE2 receptors. So where are these receptors? The throughout our body, there are multiple ACE2 receptors, and they're also up in the upper respiratory tract, but they are in other parts of our body. So for example, like in the GI tract, in the heart. So once they're in the cell, on a cellular level, they start multiplying and they start replicating and copying each other. And this happens in the first couple of days and copious amounts of this virus are replicated, they are copied, and then the virus continues to infect other cells. Now there's a race between the virus and the immune uh, system. And obviously the virus wants to win. The immune system is a defense mechanism trying to fight um, against the virus while the virus is starting to replicate. And these are the early days of the infection. And what happens during the early days of the infection, you start feeling unwell, you might have a fever and then a dry cough, and then towards the end of the week, or maybe in day four, day five, day six, you get a shot of breath. Having said that, there are some people where the virus does uh, replicate and they do not have any symptoms. And if the immune system is unable to beat the virus, then the virus starts invading our body further into other cellular levels. And it goes from the upper respiratory tract, now down the windpipe and the trachea, down to the lower levels of the lung and right to the very end where you see these sac-like structures called the alveoli. And next to the alveoli, there are little blood vessels called capillaries and that's where the virus might infect your lungs. And the problem is if the alveoli get infected, then it's, um, it's bad news for you and it's bad news uh, for the lung. And these sac-like structures right at the end of the lung, they are lined with a lot of cells and they also have ACE2 receptors and these cells might die. And because they die, a lot of white blood cells, which are part of the immune system, uh, start dying as well and they collect copious amount of debris and 
pus is if the alveoli are affected, then the diffusion, that is the uh, gas exchange, uh, oxygen exchange from the alveoli to the capillaries are affected. That means less oxygen goes over as well as less exchange of, um, of this uh, gas to the red blood cells in the capillaries and you have problems with breathing. And that's when you have what we refer to as pneumonia and you have this viral pneumonia, which is very typical for COVID-19. And then you have these symptoms, which are not only the fever, the cough, but in particular, your, the shortness of breath. And it's a very interesting when you look at the CAT scans of these lungs, you see tiny patches of white when you're looking at a CT scan. And everything in a lung in a CT scan, which is a good lung, should look black or blackish. However, when you have white patches, that means those parts of the lungs are not working as they should be. There's not air in there, but there's debris in there or there's something else in there. And that will tell the person who's looking at it, and not only the physician, but the radiologist, that there's not enough diffusion of uh, gases, there's oxygen exchange, which is taking place. And other organs can be involved, such as the brain. And if the brain is involved, um, it gets inflamed, you can have a swelling in the brain. And if you have a swelling in the brain, that's not a, a good sign. And the way the, um, the, this presents is you feel, or you are more confused, more of a disorientation, and you're more prone to have seizures. Uh, there is the increased risk of stroke. Now, another organ which can be involved are the eyes. The eyes are also a port of entry, and uh, typically you can see some of redness in this uh, uh, inner lining of the eye, and we refer to this as conjunctivitis and inflammation in that um, area. Then another body part or organ which can be involved is the nose, and there is a loss of smell. And we think that the connection between the nose and the brain these olfactory channels uh, can be involved, thus the loss of smell. I already talked about how the lungs involved, but the heart can be involved as well. There can be an inflammation of the heart, which is called myocarditis, but, and uh, the heart cells as well as the vessels are rich in ACE2 receptors. And another thing which can happen in the heart are that blood clots uh, go to the heart, and this, is, uh, this increases the likelihood of a heart attack, this increases the likelihood of an irregular heart, which we refer to as arrhythmia. And another organ which can be involved are the kidneys. And now the kidneys can be involved either directly or indirectly, and directly through direct damage. And uh, when there's direct damage of the kidneys, the kidney is a filtering organ, and, uh, um, and we see protein in the urine. And every time you see protein in the urine, we know all oh, the kidney is damaged, there's something, there's something um, uh, going on, and uh, this is interfering with the filtration uh, with the kidney. As you know, the kidney is also an organ keeping toxins out of your body and getting toxins out of the body as well. And if that filtration um, effect of the kidney is missing because it's damaged because of the virus, then it's a big problem. The other thing which can happen is that the kidney it can be attacked indirectly. And the way that works is if there is an overwhelming infection in your body, there is a, a fight between the virus and the immune system, the, uh, the body can become septic. And usually when the body becomes septic, there are other infections happening at the same time. There can be a co-infection with bacteria at the same time. And, uh, and every time there is an overwhelming fight going on, the blood pressure drops in your body. And if there's less blood pressure, that means the pressure is less all over your body and also in your kidneys. And if there's less blood flowing through the kidneys, that means there's less oxygen flowing through the kidneys and there uh, is likely more damage to the kidneys as well. Another organ which can be involved are your intestines, your GI tract and usually presenting symptoms with the GI tract, abdominal pain, diarrhea, and nausea. And the intestines are rich with ACE2 uh, receptors as well. And like I said before, now there's a race between the virus 
and the defense system. And the defense system is your immune system. And your immune system has a lot of little helpers, which are called the white blood cells. And these white blood cells try to attack the virus and they have other helpers, which are T cells and B cells and, and other receptors on these cells and macrophages. And they start attacking the virus and there's this fight and this battle, this war uh, going on. And um, somehow these uh, uh, white cells have to uh, communicate with other cells in your body and this is some sort of chemical signaling which is going on between each other and these are called cytokines. Now what happens there, a lot of these cytokines are made and this is what we refer to as a cytokine storm and this becomes overwhelming for your body, overwhelming for your system and and not only are your lungs involved, but then your blood pressure drops and other organs are involved, like I already mentioned before. And this can involve then the brain, the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, as well as your blood vessels. And this leads to an overwhelming organ dysfunction and organ failure. The other thing which is quite interesting with this COVID-19 infection is you're more likely to get uh, blood clots and more likely to have this coagulation cascade. And what happens is that the blood vessels, they become leaky, they are damaged, the linings of these vessels become leaky, they're more prone to make clots, and these clots then can go to different parts of your body, which can be uh, your brain, and it can cause a stroke, it can go to your lungs, which can cause a lung attack, which is called a pulmonary embolism, or it can go to the heart and causing a heart attack. Now, if the heart and vessels are involved, you know, you are not only going to get a heart attack, but you can get arrhythmias as well, and your heart can get um, inflamed. Another thing which is quite interesting is the presentation of some of these individuals who are infected, who have low levels of oxygen, uh, however, they don't seem to be gasping for air. They don't seem to be overtly sh uh, short of breath, especially when compared to these oxygen levels. And one of the uh, ways we can ex try to explain this is, like I said, next to these alveoli are little vessels they call capillaries, and the capillaries transport blood, and blood is transported by hemoglobin, and hemoglobin are the carriers of oxygen. Now, we think that these vessels are affected, that they are constricted, and if they are constricted, there's less blood there, there's less oxygen, and thus there is less of a gas exchange. It's interesting to know that there are certain diseases which have a high morbidity and mortality, in particular diabetes, hypertension, and cardiovascular disease, coronary artery disease. We're not quite sure why these the diseases are risk factors. However, it's, it might be because of what I explained uh, before that vessels are involved and these vessels are constricted and if there's less blood uh, being transported, there's less oxygen. So it's a quick video looking at COVID-19 and how it kills you and how different organ systems are involved. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did enjoy this video, please like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you at the next video.